So Rocky um, is the creative director yeah. of Poppington, and she designs and she takes pictures. Can you stop? This, this is what we do. Um, <laughs> and she's uh, takes a lot. Really, perfect. she's like the best. She has the best lens in the uh, for pictures in the collective. Mm -hmm. But she also uh, she picked out the dogs. Uh, uh, we got them from Slow Books. Slow Books J. Slow Books J. Wow. Big shout out. I bought, we got one and then just turned in there. We're probably doing more. Cookie and Gov. Cookie and Gov. He would constantly send me pictures of like baby puppies. Couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't take it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Then he hit me with the Gov picture and I was... But she, she also, uh, like, she came as an intern and I just noticed that uh, she had a taste level that was at a professional yeah, that's, level. That's what I was going to ask you. Like, when, how did y'all meet? Like, how did, how did the initial meeting go about like, when you first met her? And well, she, she, was an, she came mm -hmm. as an assistant's intern because some, an intern had quit. And an assistant that was working was so nervous about doing work that they wanted someone to help her. But, you know, long story short, you know, working with me, you get thrown whatever is inspiring me or whatever problem. So, when the tax stuff first started happening, I noticed people like Barry Clawberg were robbing me. Um, I didn't want anybody else being my accountant, so she had to go from being an intern to actually being my accountant for a little while. But at the same time, when she first came, you know, the first one of her first jobs was to for me and Rachel to sign the deal for the Jones deal. So she and it was in like the Wall Street Journal, so she knew how real shit was. But like, also. The first trip she took road trip with me, like, you know, I got into an argument or a fight in, on the street. And then I went uptown to my cousin's shop in the heart of the Bronx, so she got to see how authentic things were. Had Coco Icy's. Yeah, Coco, you know, as well. And then, you know, that's when my, my son was playing, you know, basketball at the dog show on 135th and Broadway, or 34th and Broadway, and I was conducting meetings on crates just to watch. So she understood everything that was going on but like she'd also be the one that would hit me in, on the on the email and be like um the newspaper just called for a comment about your house being foreclosed you know like shit like that so you know she had to deal with all the scrutiny of what was happening in the real world because i wasn't in the real world but she also was giving every challenge i gave her because also then like when i started to need because initially when she came i was doing um I was trying to sell um, cars. I was making cars with Malcolm Bricklin. Yeah. An electric car. Electric car. You know, it was like the Fisker and it was the Bricklin and it was the Tesla. The Tesla one. Yeah. But I was trying, you know, I was figuring it out. And, you know, then I got back into music just for inspiration. But I like needed logos and she like did this logo and you know, and, and, and because I was raising my daughter at the time, we had painting time. And then I, she's like painting some professional shit. Like we always paint, and we were like, and then I looked at her painting, like, what the hell is, you know? Right, right, right. So all of a sudden, like, I knew she had the skills at a creative level, but a creative level, but at a professional creative level. Right. So she did. She paid the bills. Plus she, you know, did logos, and then I'd be like, she started getting nice with the, the camera. So she started taking pictures, and then she started to edit videos and shooting videos, and then she started doing album covers and. You know, so and then she had her own clothes. Like then she, you know, I needed to start a company. Anytime I like, I needed. Anytime I need to start a company, I usually go to her just to start it, get it going. Like if I need to do a magazine, I do a magazine. You know what I mean? Or if I need to start a clothing company, I'll be like, you know, I need you to design a line, tech pack it, and produce it. And even though she's never done it before, she figures it out. Right. And then like through the last five or six years, a lot of people have betrayed us in business that were supposed to be our friends. Mm -hmm. And she was probably one of the only people that would be working with us that would be just as offended as I was. You know, everyone else, when I get dissed, they don't take it like they all get dissed. You know what I mean? I'd be like, yo, they suing me. They suing our whole collective. How you just mad? I gotta be hanging with niggas that's suing them. <laughs> that's what you know, it's real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But she was like, you suing me, you suing like, us. Yeah. Right, that's how I do yeah. You know, and, uh, and then like one time in the, um, and like a, a, on a dark block, me and Steve Stout almost got into a fight again. And like, that was with her and her friend and, uh, and Mackenzie. And like, they like, Mackenzie started decking this nigga. <laughs> but, you know, he got so disheveled by her. And, and like, his, his uh, girl who he was with, some chick, like, tried to grab Mackenzie. Mackenzie, like, you better get your man, bitch. So, in a minute of that, he tried to come at me again. And she jumped in front, and this nigga threw her on the floor and all that. 
So you know he had to guess he got had to tickle him. He got no, sued. You lost it though, low key. He got nah, he got him. No, I'm saying mentally you lost it. Nah, I was like, don't move, cause I couldn't believe he was touching women. That shit was stupid to me. So I would just like sue him. He like, cause he sued Puff. So I was like, sue. So you know I had, I had a legal. So we just you know he had to pay ten grand. It was like either he wanted to pay ten grand or pay some money. Mm -hmm. Or as a man, I'm gonna probably need a fair one. So he paid the money. Yep. I don't think you're allowed to talk about it. <laughs> but yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can talk about it because I, you know, but you know. But yeah, so my point is like, when they, she jumped in front of me. She didn't know him, you know, he's a right. dumbass. But he, you know what I mean? Like, she didn't know what he was had the ability to do. So it was innate for them to protect me. So I'm not really used to people trying to help me or feel the way when I, I'm, you know what I mean? I'm usually protecting other people. Right. So to see like, and then to be a woman is like, so then we got close. <laughs> she don't panic when the pressure is on. No, she don't panic. That's one thing she don't do. She don't yeah, She's been the around worst. the world with me. Yeah, and that's the worst. The she panic. put me on to the black keys. You know what I'm saying? Like well, a lot of the white people shit I know. She's Spanish, but she knows white people. She thought she was white till she got here. Because she was raised around white people, but she really Spanish. So she put me on to all the cool white shit. You know what I mean? So, you know, I'm not the cool nigga I am just because I know everything. It's because of the people that are around right. me. And she's one of those people. And she looks good. So. <laughs> but in the beginning, when you felt kind of funny about like the transparency, because everything was transparent to her, like this. Nah, I love that. That was actually was a different yeah, business model. See what happened when she, she first, everything. When she first started working for me, always transparent though. Yeah, you know me. I'm, I'm yeah. out. But when, when she first started working for me, I said I'm gonna change my business model completely. Right. I said because I had I started the race to Lula, so I was like it's gonna be about love and just spoiling women. Right. And she just caught that lick. And that's because of that, you know, because honestly, my daughter's, you know, she written. was always spoiled. Yeah, you were spoiling, spoiling the. Uh, I spoil everybody. Yeah, I like these, I got puppies, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. I guess it's therapeutic. But um, on a business level, yeah. you know, my thing was to, 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 to get around people that inspired me yeah. and to make their dreams come true. So she wants, if she saw like an artist like Black Key, she liked, so I'll make their dreams, I'll work with them. And then because of that, you know, I did such a cool thing because no one knew who they were, you know, just made me look good. But really my agenda was just to blindly make other people that I cared about dreams come true. You know what I mean? And that's the trick. It's the more you can care about other people, the more you get back. You know, artists and people usually just start caring about themselves, especially when they start getting it's famous. It's funny you said that because today I read a comment, somebody said, that's not the truth. They said it's not true that if you help people, if you help people, you will be helped, or you get the returns on your help, the help you give, or the love you give. It's probably not the, the return that you think. Right, it may not be from that. But person. it should be like the feeling that you get that, like I know, like the one thing that I know about any woman that's mad at me, that has children by me, I don't really care how mad they are. If they keep my children right, they're not gonna take the pleasure of me being a gentleman away. Yeah. I feel good when I'm, a, when I'm, when I'm a man. Right. It makes me feel good. your money, you're not the boss.